So how do we find the percent composition of each element here inside of cobalt to hydrogen carbonate? Well, the first step is to find the mass of this particular compound, and I'm going to use this table to help us out. Bam! So the first thing I see is I have to write down the particular elements I see in the compound. So we have cobalt, we have hydrogen, we have carbon, and we have oxygen. Next is to then write down the number of atoms of each element, and that's where the subscripts come into play. So for cobalt, there's an invisible one there at the bottom, so that means that there's one cobalt atom. Uh, for hydrogen now, there is also an invisible one down there, meaning that there's one hydrogen, but this hydrogen is tied up inside of this polyatomic anion hydrogen carbonate, and we have two hydrogen carbonates. Therefore, we'll have two hydrogens in total. You can simply take that subscript and then multiply it by the outer subscript. All right, so that'll simply be two hydrogens. Same thing for carbon. Carbon has a subscript there of one, but then we have to multiply it by that outside subscript, so there's two carbons. And same thing for oxygen, three times two for a total of six oxygens. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take those number of atoms down. We're going to multiply it by the mass of each particular element. Now, these masses are found on the periodic table, so let's take a look. So cobalt here is 58.93, hydrogen is 1.01, .01, carbon is 12.01, .01, and oxygen is 16. These masses can represent gram per mole or AMU, depending upon if you're finding molar mass or molecular mass. All right, so let's write them down. So 58.93 for cobalt, hydrogen was 1.01, .01, carbon is 12.01, .01, and then oxygen was 16. Then all you have to do now to find the total mass of each element in the compound is simply multiply the row on a cross. This is the mass of one cobalt, and since I only have one cobalt, I just take one and multiply it by the mass, right, which would give us 58.93. Then for hydrogen now, each hydrogen is 1.01 uh, .01 units of mass, but we have two of them, so the total mass there is 2.02. .02. Right, for carbon then we do that multiplication, so that'll be 24.02. .02. And then same thing for oxygen, right, that'll work out to be about 96. And then now to find the total mass of the entire compound, guess all what we have to do? Just add this column together to find the total mass, all right? So when we add that column together, we get a total of about 180, let me make that a little neater, 180.97. And now that we finally found the total mass of the entire compound, now we can find the percents of each. And this part's gonna be very, very simple now. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a uh, column here to the table, so just one moment. Bam, so now to find the mass percent of, let's say, cobalt, we're simply gonna take the total mass of cobalt here in the compound, 58.93, and then we're gonna divide it now by the total mass of the entire compound. That's why we had to do that first. So this is 180.97. And then you're gonna take that fraction and multiply it by 100. This is a simple percent, right? Part over whole times 100. So now when you do that math out, the percentage here works out to be about 32, 32.5. Uh, five six percent all right around there to two decimal places next you're going to do the same thing for hydrogen take the total mass of the hydrogen not the not the molecular mass or the atomic mass all right we're going to take the total mass 2.02 .02, and then divide it by the total mass of that entire compound of 180.97 times that by 100 and we get a percent here of about 1.11 1 .1, uh, or so or one point yeah 1.12 or right considering the rounding so we got that. Then the same thing for carbon, right? You definitely are figuring out the pattern, I'm sure. Right? This is how nice and easy this is. The table provides a nice visual of how to go about this. And this works out to be then about 13.27%. All right. And then last but not least, <clears throat> we will do the 96. I'm not going to write all the zeros. 96 over then 180.97 times that by 100. And here we get a percentage of about 53, 53 point, uh, I guess, I don't know, zero five percent okay? And if you were to add all these percents together, hopefully we didn't make a mistake, but you can always check and see if they're 100%, and it should work out to be about that, all right? So guys, thank you so very much for tuning in. I appreciate it. Please help us out by subscribing and liking, and uh, maybe even telling some of your classmates, all right? We'll see you soon. Take care.